Jesus to God, to Reverend Moore. I thank him for this opportunity to come before you to preach a word. I know that some of you have not seen me in a long time, but I've made it through. Made it through because God has been with me. Every morning I would put on the whole armor of God. As I went to work, I would put on my PPE. As I've come through this pandemic, taking care of patients, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your texts. I thank you for the cards you would send me. I thank you for the little treats you dropped off by my house. They really encouraged me to help me get through this difficult time. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. This morning I'm here to preach a word. The scripture this morning will come from Matthew 11, 28 to 30. I'll be reading from the New King James translation. And it says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My sermon is entitled, The Invitation. Let us pray. Father God, as once again a few of your humble servants come before you, we come before you first giving you thanks for this day. And Lord, we come and ask you to be with us today as I come to preach this word. I Lord, I ask that I decrease and you increase, that this word will be a word that you have for your people for such a time as this. May it be a word that just doesn't sound good, but a word that does some good in somebody's heart and their life. In your name we ask these things and we pray, amen. The Invitation. 2020 is a year that will be forever etched in the minds and the hearts of the people. It is a year that we will never forget, although many of us would like to forget it. It is a year that has been defined by the global, global pandemic of COVID-19, which has caused over 160,000 deaths in the United States alone. Many of us have suffered loss, and they are not just a number in the statistics, but our friends, our family, and our loved ones. There are people that are still sick and recovering from the COVID virus. There is a constant threat of a second pandemic, a second wave, and people still think this is a hoax. We are being bombarded with a lot of information, some of which is fake, and we don't know what to believe, and we don't know what to trust. Businesses are shut and never to reopen. They may never recover from this. There are mass layoffs and joblessness. The cost of essential items are being increased to the point where people can't even afford to buy them, to buy milk and to buy eggs. People are unable to provide for their families, facing eviction, while there's a political wrangling over the provision of the help the people so desperately need. There is injustice with the people of color continuing to be marginalized and oppressed and not treated as a people. There is increased gun violence in New York with so many innocent bystanders being shot and killed even while enjoying a game of handball at a park in the middle of the day. And the list goes on and on and on. And we have not faced the final curtain with four months left to this year with the ever important presidential election as part of it. We wait with bated breath to see what will be next and when will it all end. We may feel like Jeremiah, weeping because of all that we see and all that we're experiencing. When one of us is hurting and in pain, we all hurt and are in pain. We may be like Habakkuk, crying out, how long, Lord, must I call for help? but you do not listen, or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. We are at the end of our rope and hanging by a thread, and may utter the words of Grand Master Flash and say, don't push me, because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. It's like a, a jungle sometime. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we are in a jungle, 
And it's not lions and tigers and bears, oh my, that we are up against. Sadly, we feel like God, like, that God, like Elvis, has left the building. There was a text I received that said, 20 years ago, we had Steve Jobs, Johnny Cash, and Bob Hope. But today, we have no jobs, no cash, and no hope. But I am here today to say that we, as people of God, have hope. We are only going through what we go through because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness, on Christ, the solid rock we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. There is a word of encouragement from God for us today. Jesus gives us three invitations in our text. He says, come unto me. He says, take my yoke upon you. And he says, learn of me. Verse 28 says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Invitation number one, come unto me. Many of us have received invitations for different occasions in our lifetime. The invitation has some vital information on it. The who, what, when, where, and why. Let's see what this invitation has to say. What is an invitation for reorganization and change? The people Jesus was speaking to were following the quote, unquote, wise and learned Pharisees who had placed so many rules and regulations on the people that religion had become a labor and their life of devotion to the law became a burden to carry. Jesus invited the little ones, the true disciples with their eyes open for the truth, to abandon pharisaic legalism and to come to him. Who is Jesus who sends out this invitation? He is inviting those who are laboring and heavy laden. He is inviting not some, but all who are weary and burdened, those who are overcommitted and overwhelmed, those who are harried and hurried, those who can't keep up, but they can't slow down, those that are depleted and defeated, those who are stretched and stressed, those that are anxious and restless, those that are moving at warp speed, but they're running on empty, those that are helpless and hopeless, they're expended and exhausted. They're extremely tired and they're weighed down. And those that are ready to stop and to collapse. Have I come down your street yet? When? He says you can come at any time you're experiencing extreme weariness. You can come to Jesus anytime when you feel like you're fallen and you just can't get up. In mind, body, and spirit. Because God's word says, I am with you always. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Many of us are crying out to the Lord today. The where. There is no set meeting place. You can come to him at work, at home, on the bus, wherever. Today, we have to be careful about accepting invitations because we have to be concerned about social distancing. Who is going to be there? How many people are going to be there? Will they be wearing masks? Many of us have had so much interaction, have not had so much interaction with people because we're sheltering in place. And this wearing, this is wearing some of us down because we're not used to being alone. We're people of community. We need to be with others and we're desperately in need of a hug. Jesus says, come, just as I am, without one plea. There is no special dress code. There is no theme. There is no admission fee. You don't even have to bring a dish or BYOBB. For some of the young people, they might have to look up and see what does that mean. Hope, everyone who thirsts, Come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why? If you are in one of those categories in the who list that I mentioned earlier, or if you're in a class all by yourself, but are exhausted, Christ says, 
Come, I will give you rest. The dictionary has many definitions for the word rest. The refreshing, quiet repose of sleep. The refreshing ease or inactivity after exertion or labor. Relief or freedom for anything that worries, troubles, or disturbs. Mental or spiritual calm or tranquility. The repose of death, eternal rest. In Jesus, we have these descriptions of rest, but with him, we get so much more. In the original Greek language, the word rest, anaposim, means there is justification and salvation. There is deliverance from the slavery and the bondage of sin. The power of Christ to conquer habits that damage the human body and destroy the human soul. Christ will give rest to the struggling and despairing, the empty and lonely soul, no matter how intense the struggle and despair or the emptiness and loneliness. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now, for he is able and he can save you. Jesus says, I will give you rest. I will refresh you like nobody or nothing else can. You will be free from the guilt over sin. You will have deliverance from fear and despair. And you will have the future promise of continued help and guidance from the Holy Spirit. Verse 29 to 30 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am lonely, I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Invitation number two, take my yoke upon you. A yoke is a heavy wooden harness that fits over the shoulders of an ox or oxen. It is attached to a piece of equipment that the oxen can pull. It's extremely important that the yoke was fitted for the shoulders of the oxen to prevent rubbing of the flesh, roar, and causing sores on the animals. Jesus, being a carpenter, was very familiar with yokes. The law was considered a yoke that was considered too hard for the people Jesus was addressing to bear. Jesus was inviting the people to discipleship by saying, take off the heavy, burdensome yoke of the law that the Pharisees have placed on you and take my yoke upon you. For us, the yoke is our life and our purpose while we are here on earth. We may feel like the burdens or yoke that we are carrying are just too much. Our yokes are ill-fitting and keep us restrained, feeling as if we are oppressed, depressed, and in a mess, and living a life, as Solomon would say, that is meaningless. Meaningless, meaningless, all is meaningless. But Jesus says, I am here to break every chain. Jesus says, I am here to break the yokes and lift the heavy burdens. So all come lay down the burdens you have carried, for in the sanctuary, God is here. Jesus invites us to take off the heavy, ill-fitting yoke that you are wearing that does not look good on you. We sometimes get very comfortable in our state, that we don't even realize that we are burdened and we're not living up to our purpose-driven life. You may ask, why should I take off my yoke? I'm glad you asked that, because Jesus' invitation is for us to reorganize our lives. Lighten your load and unpack those suitcases of stress, worry, depression, and busyness. Take off your heavy yoke and exchange it for my lightweight yoke. Why? Because Jesus says his yoke is easy. My yoke is crustos. His yoke is well-fitting. And his burdens are light. A Jesus yoke is the one, is a one-of-a-kind, custom-made, designer-fitting yoke created just for you. You don't have to worry about seeing somebody else with your yoke on and pictures in a magazine with the statement, who wore it better? This is your life and your purpose. So wear your yoke for it is going to look good on you and look good on you alone. Sometimes in life with trials and tribulations, our yoke may feel heavy. Jesus' yoke is a special yoke which causes the weight of life you are carrying to fall onto bigger shoulders, 
Jesus becomes like Atlas. He's able to carry it. You are partnering with someone who is, has more pulling power than you have. What I like when I looked at that scripture is that Jesus is able to walk with me and talk with me and tell me that I am his own as we walk side by side pulling the weight of life. But what a friend I have in Jesus because when I get too tired and I can no longer pull and carry my weight, Jesus will lift me up and carry me. We may, not, we may be like the bent over woman in the Bible, cumbered with mental, physical, and spiritual heavy loads of care. But once Jesus spoke the words to her, woman, thou art used, loosed, she was able to straighten up and not, and, and not be burdened down and cast down. She was able to straighten up and be able to walk, be able to talk be able to actually dance and give God praise because she has taken off that heavy yoke that she was carrying. Putting on a Jesus yoke will make you be able to stand up, speak up, walk right, talk right, and serve God and humanity better. Cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Invitation number three, learn of me. Jesus was a teacher and leader extraordinaire. He invites us to learn of him and to learn from him how to live and to labor. This is a call to discipleship. After one has been refreshed by coming to Jesus and getting rest, it is not a time to sit by idly is a time to work, is a time to serve. When we go on vacation, or in these days, staycation, it only lasts one or two weeks, and then we have to get back to work. He says, look at my life as the greatest example of how you should serve. Jesus was not a hard taskmaster. Jesus was gentle and lowly in heart. He was not prideful or arrogant. He was compassionate, caring, Humble, kind, loving, patient, faithful, forgiving, just, and fair. Jesus came to serve and not to be served. Discipleship and following entails a lifelong learning experience. Our lives should always be one where we don't consider ourselves wise and that we know it all. We must be constantly thirsting after knowledge until the day we die. The day we stop learning is the day we stop living. How do we learn of and learn from Jesus? Read and study your Bible daily, privately. Attend Sunday school and Bible study for collective study. Pray, love your neighbor as yourself. Study and take on the characteristics of Jesus. Don't just let, when you're reading the Bible, don't just let it be information. Let it be information that causes a transformation in your life. Let us not be conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Serve, being about the business and not the busyness of the church. By taking Jesus' yoke and learning of him, we are offered rest for our souls. It is a rest of refreshing one's body, mind, and spirit. It is a rest that fits one's life, a rest that infuses a person with true purpose, meaning, and significance. It is a rest of encouragement and motivation of the soul, a rest that stirs a person to live and undertake his or her God-giving task with enthusiasm, vigor, and endurance. God did not create, create us to be somebody else. When he created us, he broke the mold. He gave us a purpose when we came to this earth. And we should strive to do our purpose that God has given us using the gifts that he has given us. Don't try to be somebody else because you're just going to mess up because you were not made to be that person. God has shown us what to do. He says, O oh mortal, what is good? And what does God require of us? to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. 
So we have the invitation. Come unto me. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Why? Because Jesus says, I will give you rest. Why is rest important? After you receive rest, you are able to release some things. And there's some things in our lives that we need to release. After you receive this rest, you will be revived. After you receive rest, you will be refreshed. After you receive the rest, you will be renewed. You will be able to refocus. You will do a reality check and be more realistic. Because some of us are doing things that's out of our realm right now. And we need a reality check. After you receive the rest, you will be able to remobilize yourself. You will be able to relearn some things. I'm here learning how to do Zoom. I was just telling Anika, I need a Zoom class for dummies. <laughs> so we're relearning. We're all relearning. After you get rest, there will be reconciliation. Because we need to reconcile some of our relationships. After you receive the rest, you will reconnect. And there will be stronger relationships. You will be able to reorganize your life. But that's only after you get the rest. Because when you're tired, sometimes we're grouchy, we're grumpy. And it's not just, just getting sleep. Because I read some places it says that you can sleep, but sometimes you're not resting. When I had the Fitbit, when I used to have the, the Fitbit watch on, you had it at night, and we showed that sometime at night, I wasn't even asleep. I was asleep. I thought I was asleep, but I was not getting full hours of sleep at rest. So it says, and after you are better, to re, you'll be, be better able to reorganize your life. And he says, after you reorganize your life, after you've gotten that rest, you can now see clearer, and you'll be able to reimagine your life. For what do we do not know? what the future holds. But we know who holds the future, and we know who holds our hand. You will be able to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. You may not feel like you can rejoice now because of your tiredness, but the scripture says rejoice in the Lord always, even in your tiredness, even in your lack of sleep. Rejoice. And you will be able to rededicate your life. We may not be doing all that we should be doing for Christ right now, for our communities. But after you've gotten the rest, you reorganized and you reimagined, you can rededicate your life to Christ. What do you want me to do? In the case you are still pondering whether to accept this invitation, here is what's in it for you. Because sometimes we got to always look and say, what am I going to get out of this? You know, when we go to a party, sometimes they give you a little party favor. Something to take home to remember that you were at the party. So it says, after I come to this party and I've come, I've taken, and I've learned, what do I get? Well, you're going to get grace and gratitude. You're going to get contentment and courage. You're going to get peace and perspective. You're going to get dependence and delight. You're going to get trust and thriving. You're going to get strength and sanity. You're going to get a slower pulse and a steady praise. You're going to get worship and wonder. You'll get restoration and refreshment. In other words, you will get rest. Chuck Swindle penned these words. He says, in place of exhaustion and spiritual fatigue, God will give you rest. All he asks is that you come to him, that you spend time thinking about him, meditating on him, talking to him, listening in silence, occupying ourselves with him totally, and thoroughly lost in the hiding place of his presence. The bottom line of an invitation has these letters, RSVP. My question to you today is how will you RSVP to this invitation to rest, reorganize, and reimagine today. Won't you come to Jesus, take his yoke upon you, and learn of and from him? To God be the glory.